Hello, I am George Simons, and today you're watching Diversity Introductions. Welcome to the world of diversity and diversity. I'm George Simons. I am an old guy going on my 87th year, and I've been involved in intercultural matters almost all my life. I was born into the uh, wonderful, what we call back then, the melting pot of the United States of America, where you could walk four blocks and then you would discover that people were speaking a different language. What gets you up in the morning? Well, besides the alarm clock, or the bright sunshine if I happen to be sleeping in, what gets me up in the morning is that I have people that I'm working with, projects that I feel are extremely important to continue to contribute to the world that I live in, and I've got things to do about those. So I do get up in the morning and I get busy about trying to make the world a better place by the things we do with diversity and our other intercultural activities and connections with people. Do you have a secret talent? I don't know how secret it is, but I love to cook. That I got from my dad too when I was a kid. Any fears? Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my father, gave me this sense of curiosity rather than sense of fear about most things. And that has helped me very much through my life, not only in becoming an interculturalist, but in the sense of fears are usually unresolved questions or problems. What is your greatest extravagance? Okay, that is a great question because um, I tend to, uh, for most of my life, I traveled all over the place. I worked in uh, 55 countries um, and uh, visited another 20 or so. And I, I think uh, I'm feeling guilty now in this age of ecology because uh, my, <laughs> my carbon footprint is probably bigger than a football field. What is my advice to the future generation? Well, I'm worried about you guys, uh, really. So my advice to the future generations is, yes, communicate. Yes, connect with other people. But above all, find colleagues, compatriots, uh, co-workers, neighbors, whose presence in your life and your presence in their life is a way of enriching the world you live in. What advice would you have given to your younger 20-year-old self? I think what I would have given him, uh, given advice to myself is uh, question more of what you hear and what is asked of you. Which historical figure would you identify best with? I think I would like to be one of those wonderful Greek philosophers uh, for whom questions were more important than answers. What are the qualities that you like most in people? I am interested in people who are interested in everyday real life at every level. And uh, to me, that means people who communicate well, tell those stories, here's what's going on. And also who are willing to spend time. What do you do for fun in your free time? I'm not doing much for fun at my age anymore, but uh, things that I, I used to do is we would go biking. I'm, and I'm a great guy for spending time in the swimming pool and getting exercise and blah, blah, blah in the corner of the nice water when it's too hot outside. What is the most treasured possession that you have? Depends on how you think of possession and have, but I have a lifelong friend of over 50 years. His name is Walt and we've done all kinds of things together and he's 
suffering from the same, not the same, but his his own version of the old age uh, things that are getting at him. But on the other hand, we, we connect with each other at least once a week, talk about what's going on in the world, talk about what we contribute and who's working with us and that sort of thing. What is friendship? I think I just described one. And uh, to me, that's the, telling the story about it is better than trying to define it. Imagine that you are the president of France for one day. What would you do? I'd... <laughs> I, I don't know what power I could exercise in a single day, but I would certainly at least speak my values uh, as clearly as I could in a way that I hope I would connect with people who would recognize their own engagement in these values or possibility in these values. My first job, okay. Um, my first job was as a shipping clerk in a pneumatic tool company. Uh, you know what in pneumatic tools are, there's the thing you see you guys on the road going, da, 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 you know. Um, and it was a summer job that uh, um, I worked with a, a, a guy who was a friend of my dad as an assistant in the shipping department. So it was basically, people would send me a pile of things with a, an order on top of it. I'd find the right box, find the right packing to wrap it up and put it on the truck, you know. What job would I hate? I think uh, I'd hate a job that kept me totally isolated from other people and was quite mechanical. I mean, I would have to enter into my best uh, um, Buddhist spirituality to live with a job like that, you know. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would that be? Um, well, I'm working on that. Uh, another 10 kilos uh, disappearing will help me a lot in life. So I lost 10 kilos this year, and I'm going to hopefully uh, continue to uh, thin up a bit and uh, extend my life span a, a few days on the basis of that. I don't know. What kind of boss am I? I don't even think of myself as a boss, but mostly as a collaborator and a resource person uh, and uh, somebody who makes clear uh, where we're going or where we should go and how we can get there and uh, above all makes clear that that the, the people who work with me are heard and that their collaborative efforts are understood and, and actually can be implemented in a, in a real su successful way. What is the essence of the internet in one sentence or word? Well, it's like a bus. We're all on it. We don't necessarily have the same destinations. So we get off and on and change buses and so on and so forth. So to me, it's, it's just a vehicle, you know. If you were given a billboard space to write a message on, what would that message be? Would be something like, stop the genocide. What do you feel is your greatest achievement? Still being alive um, and working at that. Um, I don't know, I mean, my biggest project, of course, has been the diversity uh, work that we're doing here together. And uh, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, pointing out the the value of it to bring people together, to connect with each other, to mutually become like and to like each other in better ways in a world where we're just, you know, working with populism and divisions and we versus them uh, seems to be the order of the day. So to me, to me, my work with the creation of these games and uh, their effective delivery and helping people to work with them. That's, uh, you know, that's sort of my uh, main work right now. In three sentences or less, what is diversophy? Diversophy spells out itself. It's Sophia, Sophie, Sophia, wisdom, diversity, differences, wisdom about differences. 
And so diversity is the game which we attempt to create and share wisdom about our differences.